Today, we're going to be taking a boring Windows 11 fresh install and transforming it to a sleek and minimal desktop experience. We're going to be finding a clean desktop wallpaper, tweaking our themes, optimizing our taskbar, and I'll even be showing you guys some nice widgets, which will look really nice on your desktop. It's going to be insane, so make sure you guys stick around to see what I come up with. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's start off with the basics. So we want to change out this wallpaper. Now, while you can just just right click go to personalize and choose one of the few options that Microsoft gives you by default in Windows 11 we're going to be taking this to the next level and we're going to be installing a moving wallpaper now to do that we're going to be using a program called lively wallpapers which I'll leave a link to in the description down below so here it is, Lively Wallpaper, animated desktop wallpapers to bring your desktop to life. Now I really like this because this is free and open source, so you can get it from Microsoft or you can just download their installer, which I'm going to go ahead and do. So yeah, the installation is pretty simple. It's just a simple setup wizard. I'm sure you guys can do all of this. All right, so here we are on Lively Wallpaper. So this is what you get when you first open it up. So they've got some pretty cool presets here. I quite like this rain one. So yeah, just click on it. That selects it. And here we go. As you can see, it has changed my wallpaper and it's moving. As you can see, these raindrops are dripping down. And when you move your mouse cursor, it kind of moves with it, which is pretty cool. Oh no, my computer's gone wrong. What's this? Matrix rain customizable. <laughs> I quite like this one, actually. This one's quite cool. But no, we're going to go with the clean aesthetic today. Let's go with the rain. Set this as a wallpaper. So yeah, make sure you've got start with Windows enabled here so that your lively wallpaper turns on when your computer turns on. And yeah, we've also got the system tray icon as well, just in case we need to go into here. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. So the next thing to do is if you've got a lot of clutter on your desktop, like lots of icons, lots of programs, folders, files, you name it. I've seen some pretty bad desktops in the past. But what you want to go ahead and do is right click on your desktop, go to view and make sure you untick show desktop icons. This will clean up your desktop and it will look so much better. Even if you don't have a lot on your screen like I have right now it's still good to hide stuff like the recycle bin and stuff like that so yeah with that hidden we've now got a really clean desktop but now let's take this a step further if we have a look at our taskbar here as you can see it takes up the whole of the bottom screen it's a lot of wasted space you know it's just a line at the bottom of my screen it's not really much use here but this is where our second thing comes in and that is called rounded tb so you can get rounded tb from the microsoft store actually so you can just go here, get in store, and yeah, it's completely free of charge. Just go ahead and download it. If you don't have Microsoft Store, say you're running a custom operating system, you can get it off their GitHub as well. All right, so here we are. This is Rounded TB. Now, if you don't know what Rounded TB is, it basically rounds the corners of our taskbar for us. So as you can see right now with it open, there is a small little line just down here where you can kind of see the desktop wallpaper through. So it's already working. So let's go ahead and turn up the corner radius to the maximum here. And as you can see, the corners are now completely round it's kind of like a dot kind of thing now that looks pretty cool and now if we just turn up this margin here <laughs> Yeah, we can now make the taskbar tiny. Would you look at that? Yeah, okay, we'll leave the margin alone and we'll continue with the corner radius. Now, this may look like a basic program right now, but if we go into advanced, there is a lot more than meets the eye. So I like to put this on dynamic modes. So once you've ticked dynamic modes, press apply. And as you can see, we have now lost a chunk out of our taskbar. And that's because every time a new application is launched, it will add it to this taskbar. So do you remember what I was saying earlier about making the taskbar into a kind of like a dock? This is pretty much what dynamic mode does. Now, we could probably do even better by going to the taskbar settings here and disabling widgets. And we're also going to turn off the search box as well. So yeah, now we've got nice central icons in the middle here. So I've just been playing around with some of the settings. I've enabled dynamic mode and I've restarted my computer. And now, as you can see, we've got a macOS docs taskbar and it looks really cool. And look at how much more space we've got. We can drag stuff around on our monitor. And the best thing about this is it's actually dynamic. So as you can see, when I just closed rounded TB there, it's made the dock smaller. But say if I open up another application like the calculator, as you can see, it's got bigger. So it will always be dynamic depending 
depending on what application you've got. It's always going to be kind of in the middle and it's never going to shift along and uh, cause any OCD problems. So another thing you can do with rounded TB is you can actually hide this area here. So as you can see, we've got like the clock and stuff here. Looks a little bit ugly. You know, if we just want the dock in the middle, this clock kind of ruins our layout here. So if we go back into rounded TB and if we go here, tick where it says show system tray on hover, press apply. And as you can see, it's gone. So now if we want to view the time or all the stuff that used to be here, we just hover in the bottom right. And as you can see, it comes back. So yeah, this looks so clean now. I really like that layout of this. So another thing you can do, and this is just personal preference, but I'm just going to go into display settings here and I'm just going to increase the size of this screen basically. So you can do that by just going to scale here and we'll put it at about one, two, five. So yeah, obviously it makes applications and stuff a lot bigger. You might not like that, but yeah, I do like having like a bigger taskbar here and this seems to be the only way you can really do it. So yeah, really liking the layout of this now, really clean. Let's move on to the next thing. All right. So next up, we're going to be taking look at widgets. Now widgets come as part of Windows 11, but they're horribly implemented. So I've just put my taskbar back to default here. And if we go on the left hand side here and click on this thing that kind of comes out and yeah, they're basically just like web links. Basically they're horrible widgets, nothing really useful here. And you can't put these on your desktop either. So they're always going to be in this little widgets area, which is really annoying. Fortunately, we can change that and we can use a program called rain meter. So to get rain meter, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. But yeah, just go to their website, click on downloads. And yeah, this is a really customizable program. It doesn't just do widgets. It does so many other things, which I won't get into in this video, but we're going to be using it for widgets because I found the widgets on here look really nice and you can customize them and install themes for them. And it's just amazing. So to customize rain meter, it's a little bit complicated. So when you first open it up, you get some like set ones here, which are pretty good. CPU usage, RAM usage, that kind of thing and they are quite functional. I mean, if we click on this system one here, it does open up our task manager. So that's a nice little shortcut to that. But yeah, we can really customize these and make these look super clean. So whether you like Mac or Apple or not, that you can't deny that their widgets are super clean. Now, thanks to this GitHub, we now have a rain meter skin, which makes our widgets in the style of Mac OS Monterey. So I'll leave this in the description down below, but look at this. This is gonna look so clean on our desktop. So yeah, to get this, just go to the releases section. I've already downloaded it. So then, yeah, you just open up this Monterey rain meter skin and yeah, we're just going to install all of these. So now if we go to the clock here, we're going to go ahead and refresh the skin. Then we're going to go to manage skin and see our Monterey extras. All right. What have we got here? Load up the, let's go for the medium size one. Let's load that. Oh, look at that. That looks so good. And it's like kind of blurred. It's like kind of translucent. Oh, this is brilliant. Let's go with the calendar as well. We might as well go with like all of them. Let's go for the small calendar, should we say? So let's go ahead and load that up. Actually, no, we'll go for medium. We'll go for medium. Yes, look at this. So yeah, it does look a lot like Mac OS. It's based off that, but look at how clean that looks. Brilliant. We've got notes as well here, which I believe is like sticky notes, but it's obviously in obviously the Mac OS Monterey skin. In fact, what happens if we click on this? Oh, we can actually make notes through this widget. Okay then, so if we just do that, Oh, so that is really functional actually. So if you need to make a quick note, just go into notes, type that, boom, you're good. So yeah, this is not only clean, but it's also functional, which I really like about this. Oh, okay, this one might be nice. Volume widget, oh, that is brilliant. Well, I mean, yeah, it looks like Mac OS. It works, I'm pretty sure. Is that turning down our sound? Yes, it is. So it's working. But to be honest, I'm not a big fan of that. I feel like that's a, a lot of wasted space there, to be honest. There might be a different version. What's this small one? Okay, this one might be a little bit better. If you want to just quickly uh, turn up and down your volume, you can do that through here. So yeah, there's various different sizes of every widget. I'm just going with the mediums right now. But yeah, the large obviously displays more information. So it tells you obviously the weather by hour and the weather by day and the top temperatures and that kind of stuff. Let's go with the medium one, see what we've got here. Okay, this one might be a lot better. We'll put that up here. So to edit your location for the weather widget, just right click on it, click on edit weather and then go to city here. So I'm just going to type in London, then just press enter. It should update and then save. And now we've got the London weather. Perfect. Let's also go ahead and make this widget a little bit smaller. And yeah, that is ideal. Honestly, that's really nice. So yeah, this is pretty much our layout here. So we've got our timer, calendar, quick little look at the CPU and RAM usage. We've got our weather, music here as well, which is really 
really cool. Let's just try and rearrange some of this. I'm going to mess around with this off camera and I'll be back once we've got a clean layout. All right, guys. So I've been playing around off camera and this is my new clean desktop layout. Would you look at that? So yeah, it turns out Rain Meter is incredibly customizable. There is so many skins and widgets out there for it. All you need to do is just search around. They install in like one click and they're super easy. So I've got a clock widget here called X clock. Very easy to install. You can drag it anywhere and it just shows the date and time, which is very nice to have. I've got another clock widget here, which is obviously our macOS Monterey widgets. Turns out you can actually edit these by just right clicking and go to edit clock and you get a nice little macOS like editor here, which is pretty cool. And you can even go to the Monterey Rain Meter main menu here and you can customize your widgets even further. So you can enable and disable them through here, which is something that I didn't do before. I was doing it manually through Rain Meter. But yeah, they've got a nice little macOS menu here, which is pretty cool. You can adjust the appearance of them as well. So you can change the theme. You can make them light, dark, auto, color, which is a little bit weird. But I personally have it on blur. I feel like that looks the best with the desktop background and stuff that we've got going on here. So I've obviously enabled rounded TB back as well. So we've got like a dock like thing here at the bottom here with all of our icons, start menu, all that good stuff. We've got the lively moving wallpaper and we've also also got our Monterey weather widget and we've also got this as you can see here we've got calculator and we've got Spotify now I've removed the music widget because I personally didn't use it but if I did that would be super cool so if we go ahead and enable the music widget here if you have it on the largest size possible you can actually play pause and skip music through this widget you'll also be able to have the cover art nice and big on this widget as well so that would be super cool but personally I'm not going to be using that so we can turn that off However, I have actually installed another macOS style widget from Rain Meter, which is the macOS Big Sur Rain Meter skin. And this has many more features. So if we go into the macOS Big Sur settings here, there is a lot more widgets that we can use here. So not only have we got the same kind of widgets that we have in the Monterey, we also now have shortcuts. So these shortcuts open up the program on your computer. So for example, here I've got Calculator and Spotify. I don't have much installed on this computer, but yeah, if we just click on this widget, boom, it opens up the Windows calculator. Same with Spotify, click on it, boom. So yeah, the idea of hiding our desktop icons before means that we can now install widgets and have only our essential programs on the right here. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff here. It supports Discord, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and there's all kinds of stuff as well. We can even have the settings one here as well. And these literally just look like iOS apps. So yeah, we can just click on that. It takes us right to our control panel. That is so cool. We've even got web shortcuts as well through here. So if we quickly wanted to go on Google, for example, then we just obviously put our shortcut here, click on it, opens up our default browser on google.com. So cool. So yeah, the Big Sur Rain Meter widgets, as well as the Monterey widgets, as well as this X clock widget, rounded TB and lively moving wallpaper makes one of the cleanest desktop layouts I think I've ever had. So yeah, I really like this and uh, yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out. Hopefully this inspires you to to uh, try out customizing your desktop for yourself. I'll leave all the programs that I've used in the description down below so you guys can check it all out. And uh, yeah, definitely let me know how you guys get on with this. And I'm definitely gonna do a part two to this video very soon. And let me know if you wanna see a customizing Linux desktop video in the future. I know a lot of people that watch me use Linux, so maybe I might do one on there. But yeah, thank you guys all for watching. And if you wanna see my last video where I customize Windows using Rectify 11 and some other pretty cool tools, then click here. And I'll see you there.